Joel Anthony. Joel Anthony. Joel Anthony. There's been less than 4,000 NBA players ever. Average career is four years. You played 10. Did you feel like a sense of loss when you retired? There's no better job in the world. Play a game of basketball and get paid money to do it. We are somewhat spoiled as athletes. Really? In terms of <laughs> Never would have thought. Why did you decide to go this route and become a general manager? My agent said I'm crazy for doing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's the GOAT? <laughs> Best player that you ever played against. What's the it's craziest atmosphere you played in? Bron's first game back in Cleveland. That I've never, like, <laughs> you know, everyone's like, we're going to go out after. I was like, all right, cool. Everyone drives up to the club. I'm driving with my teammates. The ballet dude stops me like this. He said, nah, bro. He said, general parking is over there. <laughs> If I'm an athlete and I just stopped playing, what do you think the first step they should do? It's hard at times to say like, hey, let me focus on what I'm gonna do when all this stops. You're just focused so much on, on the present and making sure you're being the best player you know, that, that you could be and putting in all the work that, that it takes for that. It's a lot of responsibility. Exactly, so like, it's, really, it's really easy, I think, for players to kind of neglect the, those type of things. Same work you put in, in terms of trying to, trying to get your body ready, trying to get your skills ready, like you have to be able to put that in into whatever you're going into after. And I think that's something like some guys aren't you know, quite, quite ready for. Welcome to another episode of You Only Die Twice. I am your host, Warren Ward, and today I'm joined by the warden, Joel Anthony. In this episode, Joel takes us through his transition from being an NBA player to now a general manager for the Montreal Alliance. We hear Joel's personal anecdotes about his humble lifestyle, life in the NBA, his teammates, former teammates, his favorite places to play, and personally, I have never laughed or enjoyed an episode as much as I have this one. If you could do us a favor, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share with a friend. And without further ado, let's get into it. I spoke to you on the phone you were talking about riding off into, into the sunset yeah and i wanted yeah. to i wanted to start with that so what oh, did okay. what did you mean when you said you want to ride off into the sunset like i i didn't want to have to really do much of anything like <laughs> I, I, like I wanted to be on a beach yeah you know like be in the islands and you know or you know just someplace warm and go to feds. i would just relax <laughs> you know like, like i could i could go to fed if i want I could, you know, like spend some time, you know, with my family. If I if I want to go, you know, somewhere, I could just get up and go. But I, I just didn't want to have to really deal with anything, um, you know, in terms of uh, I don't I don't know if to say like the want the responsibility, but you know, you you put so much time into one thing, like after a while, you just want to be able to relax, and I just wanted to be able to do that, but not as you know someone that retires like when they're you know sixty seventy years old but you know like if, if I was going to do that you know when I was younger like in you know possibly my 30s you know maybe 40 um you know I still have a, a lot of life to live so like let me just enjoy that mm -hmm. and you know just to just being able to to relax and enjoy that and, and not have you know too many you know really big responsibilities that I have to you know wrap my mind around and focus on the whole time where I'm working like like an actual job you know nine to five which is Funny in terms of how things ended up turning out. Yeah, for me. <laughs> same here. Yeah, 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 definitely. Ended up having a nine to five, and but and, and there's nothing like wrong with that. Of course, it's mm -hmm. just like you. I think most people you spend so much time doing that thing so that you don't have to do anything else. Right. But I don't think the purpose part comes from that, which is which is which is the you know which is the dilemma. So, um, what did your agent tell you? Oh <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, my age, basically when, when I got into the position I'm in now, so, you know, I take the job as, as GM and he's just like, damn, like you really just put your foot right back into it. <laughs> like you, you got out, I was, what, I, I was done playing for, for two years. I was, you know, just doing what, you know, most retired, you know, guys would do, you take a you know consulting role like I was helping out over in 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 Hamilton with the uh, with the honey badgers then okay so and still basketball related yeah but but it was it was like there, there was no real like yeah. like true like commitment like I'd be there in the coaches meetings and everything like that but when a lot of the stuff you know that they're really grinding out out to do 
you know, the, like I would just, you know, take back seat. I, I might, you know, work with some of the guys on the court. Like mm -hmm. I, I would help out, give my input, but I wasn't fully, you know, committed. I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. When did you retire? Uh, so 2019. That was your last year playing? Yeah. And where was that? Uh, in Argentina. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you just decided to get back into the Honey Badgers right after that? No, I, I was like, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I did, things had developed a little bit for me in terms of my thought process and where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. So I knew I wanted to do something. Um, I wanted to be something that obviously was going to like, you know, keep me interested and engaged and you know I, I would love to do obviously I'm, I'm never gonna find anything like basketball in terms of playing you know there's there's truly like nothing like that yeah. even if no no matter where you get into the business there's nothing like actually playing competitive basketball so well at I, the level I, you did yeah <laughs> yeah like especially yeah. then you know like like the the playoffs is you know really the time that I probably missed the game the most Really? And yeah, they like. What's the it's, craziest atmosphere you played in? I don't know, like well, Miami is always yeah. a great atmosphere. Um, you know, playoff game in New York, like over in the Garden, like that was that was pretty nice. In Boston, it was that was intense. In Boston, definitely. Um, you know, it, it, I think some of it also depends on you know the. Who, who you're playing and well like how, how the teams match up and, mm -hmm. and the type of rivalry uh, that you know that you have like those games in Indiana where we're battling you know battling out like With those Lance were Stevenson blowing in LeBron's ear you know like, like those <laughs> those were serious uh, you know Chicago you know so the, the the teams that you know we had some of the biggest battles against like the, those are the cities that in the playoffs were you know had you know pr pretty much the biggest uh, the, the, the best atmosphere mm -hmm. yeah um, upon retiring, you retire in 2019, basically COVID comes the year after. Yeah. So did you, did you feel like a sense of loss when you retired? It was, it was some, everything just kind of happened, you know, all at once where, you know, I retired and I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I had in December, I had gotten into, uh, gone involved in this, uh, coaching program um with uh with the nba because i said look like let me try to figure out i really wanted to get into the front office okay but the front office program that they had didn't um would, would have required me to be in new york part of the time and for like classes yeah like i i would i would have done stuff in new york like in um uh, and in, in, because the nba offices ah, okay. are, are over there so i would have done stuff over there and I, you know, like, I, I just didn't want to be away from my family mm -hmm. from that. Cause like, I, I just spent all this time away. Yeah. You know, I had, you know, my, my daughter was what, like three then. Um, it was, it, it was, it was really a time I was like, look, like, let me just be at home. And th this is part of the reason, you know, I, I also, you know, I also retired. I wanted to be around. And, you know, one of the reasons that, you know, I, I had her later on and not earlier is is because I knew I had to focus on my career. Mm -hmm. I, like I was the type of person I, I I don't know how some guys do it where you know they're in their younger years having you know kids or a bunch of kids. <laughs> like my 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 focus is, was like strictly on ball. Like I, I just didn't do you know much of anything else, and it it would be hard for me to commit you know to a whole another you know life, which you know you have no choice right. as a parent, and also you know have that commitment to ball and. Um, so, you know, after I was done, just wanting to be at home was, you know, kind of the biggest thing. And so, uh, I, the stuff with the coach program was, was remote. And so it was, you know, easy, easy for me to be able to do. So I was like, let me see how it is. I, I, I did enjoy some of the stuff on the player development side, especially, um, working with the guys and I ended up, uh, uh, doing a little, little bit of work, just kind of being around and helping out with the, with the 905. Okay. Um, you know, Jama was what was over there, and he he brought me around to help out. And then uh, when when Rock uh, got the position in Hamilton, then that summer, I ended up you know just kind of moving over and 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 working with him. Um, and the the I guess the sense of if there was somewhat of a sense of loss. It was where I wasn't doing much once COVID hit, and I have you know the whole program that we were doing. Um, with the coaching, the coaching program took, you know, they, they, they paused it. 
and then everyone's just dealing with COVID, you know? And so, but now I'm dealing with COVID and I don't have, you know, I, I have, you know, obviously my family I'm looking after, but you know, there's nothing else there. It's not like, Hey, I got to train for like ball. Mm-hmm. Like I've got to think about, you know, I, I got to think about work. Like now it's really, you know, just nothing. And just kind of being, you know, like just being at home and not really having much to do or even access to really do, you know, anything that I wanted. It came to the point where I couldn't even, you know, work out. You know, I ended up putting putting on a bunch of weight and it was it was just so different for me. So it, it did hit me a lot, you know, a, a lot stronger than than I would have thought because of everything else that you know, what's happening, like not playing, um, you know, just, just, just being at home for the first time, yeah. you know, in, in forever. Like it was, it was definitely a lot, you know, at, uh, at one time. You, well, in other words, you kind of like, you have to deal with yourself, you know, yeah. <laughs> right. You have to, you gotta be accountable to you and find out what else you could do. Cause the days just go by. And like, I remember personally just sitting at home, not knowing what to do. Like, I filled that time with a video game or, you know, distracted myself with the phone and then, you know, days and weeks go by and like can't do anything. Right. And that and that that was the hard part. So those first six months were probably like I'm sure they were hard for you. And re- despite all your success, you you know, two time champion, you got you know, you played in the highest league in the world and you still have the same feeling as someone like myself who didn't do any of that. <laughs> yeah, it's right. a, you know, and I, I think that's that's one thing with COVID. Like we're, you know, everyone's in the same boat. <laughs> like we're yeah. we're all dealing with it the same way. And obviously, you know, people's situations are are different, but but still, the, there's there's a lot of stuff that we all had to um, be able to deal with. And so, I was, um, you know, when when the opportunity with with Hamilton came came up, and the league was going to try to start up mm-hmm. uh, start up again, you know, I really. I really jumped at that, you know, opportunity because it was like, like one, I, I'd be able to, you know, work with one of my friends and, and, and be around the game again, but it gave me something else to be able to do and to be able to, you know, kind of put my focus yeah. in on it. You know, I, I think I was driving my family a bit crazy too. So <laughs> <laughs> there was a, <clears throat> you know, probably, a, you know, um, some some enjoyment from on that side to to see me find something else as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. funny you bring that up. You know, um, I was listening to another podcast um, that's called Diary of a CEO, and T. R. Henry talks about his family having to see him at home and like how difficult he's like. Oh, so like when I'm at the game, this is what you guys do, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like you can, like you can relate to that, right? Like you understand, like you're, you're seeing everything now in a day to day and that's weird to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a, a lot different. Like for, for some of it was great because, you yeah. know, like I, I have my daughter, of course you're and there. So, yeah, the, yeah. you know, to, to be around for that, it was great where, you know, uh, a lot of times it's even when I'm, you know, when I'm training and, and working out, like I'd, I'd be gone, you know, in, in the mornings to, you know, to, to, to work out, train, you know, I might come back after and then, you know, maybe in the evening, you know, we might have runs or something like that. So, you know, I, I, I might be gone again. So just, just to be around for the whole time and, you know, definitely seeing what, what, what you know, just a regular day yeah. what it was like a full day was, was definitely, um, you know, different because, but it was nice for me because I was able to experience it. And, you know, like I said, like with my daughter, that was huge because, you know, now I was, you know, I was able to be around. Yeah. Of course. You know, and so I could actually, you know, get, get, at least from that, I was able to get what I wanted in terms of, you know, being with her and, you know, seeing her, yeah. uh, you know, grow up and be, be more involved <laughs> and yeah. a part of that. Being present. Yeah, exactly. You talked about time, and that's such an interesting thing. So, given given the amount of time you spent playing basketball, and I'm like, I can, since you're you're forty now, I'm mistaken. Uh, forty one. Forty one. Give you probably spent like twenty five years of your life playing basketball, if not longer. Do you think it's possible, and for someone at you know at your level, to balance both, to not only have a career in the NBA and pursue that, and find something else to do at the same time. Do you think most NBA athletes do that? And were you one of them? I don't know if they do. I do think it's possible, but I literally, I was just at dinner with um, some of my guys and 
we, we had this conversation about, you know, you have guys that just like they're not prepared because like they don't one one, like they don't know what they don't know. You know, so like with us, especially when you talk about NBA players, like basically you're in a situation where, you know, you're you're able to play, you know, for this team, you're given, you know, more money than, you know, you could imagine. Buku dollars. You know, and you have also a whole bunch of free time that you could do anything you want and it's 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 hard at times to say like hey let me focus on what i'm going to do when all this stops and yeah. because you know part of it you you also want to like live in the moment and it, it doesn't mean that you know you're going to be doing anything you know crazy but you you're just focused so much on on the present and making sure you're you know you know being the best player you know that that you could be and putting in all the work that that it takes for that it's a lot of responsibility Exactly. So like it's really it's really easy I think for players to kind of neglect the, those type of things um after obviously like as you start to get older and you get more settled in and you know you you fit more in, into that vet role like that's when um it's it's a lot easier for you to start thinking about those other things. Yeah. And I think that's when you know it happens. But you do have and now uh, I do see like you have some younger players that are coming in and they're thinking about these things, you know, like well, when they when they first step and into the league. there's more money now. Yeah. And also, there's also more programs and support as well, yeah. which is what's different. When I came in, you know, there wasn't really a lot. And I remember asking, you know, we'd have a, you know, kind of a career type uh, meeting. And, you know, we'd have someone from the league come in and, you know, talk to guys about what they wanted to do. But... Um, and he he was actually the the one who had asked me like Joel like like well what do you want to do you know after and that's when I, that's when that's when I end up saying that you and know, what I year just, was I that I just want to th- th- this is for for my rookie year for so like oh okay. my oh seven right so um you know but but there were there weren't really any like really programs and support like yeah. now the player and it was unfortunate with COVID because like just before COVID the players association finally started to really develop some programs that were really good they they had a there's a tech program nice. um where you know you could have a summit and uh, you had different people in in the uh, technology field that are, that would come in and talk to guys and educate them on on different things people that have that have had you know success in it where whether it's former players that had uh that, that have done it on their own or people that were just solely in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something that I really liked there, there was a real estate symposium. Um, you know, they, they, they brought everyone, you know, a bunch of players into New York, um, had, had, had different people, uh, within, within real estate that were investing in doing different things and educating guys on that. And, you know, you, you, you take from it what you, you know, from, you know, well, whatever you want, but for me, it was huge, and like I was someone I was trying to figure out. So I took you know a bunch of notes and made some contacts. I actually flew back to New York uh, to, to to be able to see um, well, one of the guys to you know look at some of the investments. I saw some properties, and you know w- was looking into the different things that you know I could possibly I could possibly do. But you know sometimes it's just having that spark in terms of you know like oh this is an idea I didn't even know this was possible. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of times, as you know, especially as NBA players, we don't have those conversations. Like, really? I've I've been in some of those meetings, and you know, with the player association, and we've we we've talked about things, and you have some guys that are like, really, like I didn't even know this, <laughs> and then some, and like even for me, there was some stuff like, oh, I didn't know <clears throat> that. <clears throat> excuse me, that 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 we could do this or, and the, the, it was just like, the, there's a lot of knowledge that just wasn't being, wasn't being shared. And sometimes you kind of assume that guys just, you know, they, they, they know already, right. or you assume everyone else is, is all right. And, you know, you might feel weird about asking people, you know, about, you know, uh, those, those different things. And mm-hmm. so it's uh, a, a, like that, I, I think was what was really big for, for, for them to be able to have that. Cause those are the type of things that are needed to be able to help guys kind of be in a situation where they could be set up to, you know, know, or at least have an idea of what they can do right. after, after they're done. And you can't really blame them for not knowing because all they've done most of their life is put their time into basketball. Right. So it's, it's kind of hard. And I think like going off of that, I think it would be hard for any athlete at any level if that's all you've done and dedicated your time to something. But for an NBA player with all the access they have, I mean, it, 
it it kind of doesn't make sense that you don't know, but it does at the same time. You know, it's like if the average career is four years as a pro, average average career MBA or not, it's four years. Right. You play ten, like y- like you're an anomaly. You know what I mean? Yeah. To put to play that long yeah. and to and to then figure out like you want to get into real estate afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah. So like like I, I actually like I did so to be able to do like. 10 in the league, I did two overseas, and I really wanted to be able to like keep going. Overseas? Yeah, okay. yeah, and and part of it was just like the economy in Argentina just kind of took a turn and it wasn't gonna work out. But I was, at that point, when I was when I was overseas, I was, I was definitely looking into a, a lot more in terms of all that stuff that I talked about in terms of real estate and things like that. And if I continue to play, and you know, physically, I was still I was still able to play at least at that level overseas. Physically, you, know, you look I, like you can I play right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate. It. I, I, I don't know if my my fast twitch muscles are working too well, but you know, um, I'm hitting the gym but, after this. You still here embarrassing me on my own show, man. <laughs> but but like my my thing was that if if I was going to keep playing, I was now going to be in a position where I'm I'm putting in the effort in terms of looking at what I could do, you know, real estate wise. Like I, I went and got my, um, you know, worked on, you know, I took the test and everything to to, to get my license nice. over when, when I was when I went back to Florida, you know, because I I just wanted to be able to you know do more, and so like this like at that time like that's when things started to, you know, for for me started to really change in terms of my my thought process and I actually wanted to do that like as I you know a, as I kept playing and you know I think more of these players now that those type of things they're doing that you know you have more of them that are doing that when they first come in like yeah. as soon as they get into the league like those programs that are available now like I wish they were there when I was younger but those programs that are available now like the rookies are coming in and you know being being a part of those programs and asking those questions and so now like they they're getting a huge head start yeah. you know where they're able to maximize their resources and and everything like that um do you think money eliminates the need to start this process because like I okay I'm not a multimillionaire I didn't you know like I'm not I'm not in the league a lot of other athletes won't say that there's been 4,000 NBA players or less than 4,000 ever, you know, which yeah. is nuts. Yeah. Right. And you're one of them. So, you know, hats off to you. But like the, for the majority of people who won't even see that, do you think because you're a multimillionaire that you don't really need to have another passion or purpose? Like, what's the point? It, it is easier to have, a, you know, to use it as a crutch and to say, hey, like I've made this money. And so. I don't really, and but it it also depends on how much, not so much how you how much you made, but how much you spend. You know, so like like yeah. the, that that's really the the, the biggest thing because you know like I I've made you know I, I've made good money in terms of you know like the rest of the world like looking at it, but in terms of the NBA like really I was just under like the average average salary, so you know like, I didn't make you know like type of money where I could just do anything you know yeah. like at all like i would i would still have to make sure like i take care of you know my finances do the right things but i've always been someone that you know was 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 definitely like pretty frugal in terms of you know how <laughs> how, how i spent you know my my money i never Wait, got hard, i never got man? too crazy isn't that, isn't that hard to be around all these 50 million dollar people and it depends on like like from i don't want bro you're in miami like i, I don't like, want to say like in terms of like like people's like background and upbringing, but like how how I was raising the people that I was around, and I think part of it, and obviously it doesn't apply to all like us, but like my West Indian background, and you know like being very much in 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 touch with like my roots, yeah. and you know for for me that was you know like that was huge where you know I didn't care about you know a lot of the and even though you know not to say just because of that like that's how that that's why. I, I was the way it was. Like I have a lot of friends from from the islands that they they had that type of money. It would have been gone, yeah. you know, yesterday. So yeah, I would have been one of those. You know, but um, mom, you know, I, I think like p- part of it was it was really my mom and how how I was raised. Like she she taught me like, look, like if you if you want something, like I don't like I'm able to put a roof over your head, mm-hmm. but you want anything extra, like you're gonna have to do it yourself. And 
because like all the extra stuff that everyone has, like you, like I, I'm, I'm just gonna give you your basic necessity, and I'll give you as much as I can. You know, like she, she was able to, you know, like a year later, I got like the Nintendo after it came out, and mm-hmm. you know, I was able to get like all these little things as a kid. But you know, I, I started what a paper route when I was 12 yep. to be able to to earn some money when I was. 15 going uh going to 16 i uh started a uh, i started working at a uh, chinese restaurant and i was a, a bus boy dishwasher i won't lie i you can't know? see you doing that I won't lie. <laughs> and I, I i just hit my growth spurt then too I was so say, i went that's even worse i went from <laughs> six because like going 15 and 16 i went from six foot to six six in the summer <laughs> and so <laughs> i ended up you know going to school so i'm going into the 10th grade now 10th grade you know six six and then by like halfway through that year like my friends uh over at school were, were working at the restaurant and i started you know working a job so that i could you know earn earn money so like to me like that's what it was always about if i wanted something i had to put in the work it didn't yeah. matter what you did yeah you know so it was never oh this job is is you know like beneath me yeah. or anything like yeah. that and but th- that was always how I thought about things. Even you know, like when I played, like I'll do the dirty work. I'll you know dive on the floor. I'll you know you know uh, stand in front for for, for charges. You know, j- jump over people to <laughs> make athletic plays, like whatever it was. And but the the concept of of, of that, you know, doing whatever it, you know, doing whatever it takes, and knowing that you know this like everything that that we have, like you have to really work for it and you have to really appreciate it. I think that's what you know kind of kept me balanced. No, like it really kept me balanced, and you know I'm fortunate to have like good, you know, good people and good friends around that you know had a lot of that same mindset, and I think that that balance right there is what 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 really helped me, and I, I always appreciated everything that you know that I had and that was given to me. One of the things, um, you know, I always talked about, like, as much as I love, you know, real estate, every, you know, the places that I've had, they've always had, like, a really great view. It was, like, always, like, the biggest thing for me. Always. And it wasn't until, like, I actually looked at a place where I was like, I don't care about the view. And then my <laughs> realtor showed me, like, a view of my first place in Miami, and I absolutely loved it. And, you know, views, like, you, you could, you know, you don't need money for a view. You could walk up to like a nice mountain and be able to see and appreciate, you know, these, these views. And I like, honestly, like I spent so much time throughout my career where I would just take some time and it was probably at least every week I, I felt where I just take some time and just look outside and just appreciate kind of where I was, you know, how far I'd come, you mm-hmm. know, everything that had happened, you know, it was just, you know, I, 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 I just knew that I was very fortunate. You know, and so I, I think that balance, you know, like, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of kept me in line, along with, you know, family, friends, and, you know, people like that. Yeah, I mean, that got to be hard. I mean, you're around very wealthy people. You're wealthy yourself, and then not trying to play their game, like that's more tempting than being, I think, poor or broke and trying to, you know, act like you're rich, right? Like that's, you're yeah. you're really around it and still having having that yeah. mentality and talking about you know the viewpoint i think that's so important and impactful like you're you're not i don't i don't think you're using the the actual view of miami i think that's the metaphor like your your view of life like yeah. it's it's bigger than just you know competing with someone else who has a ferrari or whatever you know it's yeah no i i've never I've never been that I've never been a jealous or envious person of of what what people have like like i've seen people with nice nice things of course. and i'd be like hey you know if if i could get that you know it'd be great but like i remember my teammates my my first car was a what was a chrysler 300 so at a chrysler 300 had, in the league in the league it was a, a crisis. See, like, like you're, you're laughing now. No, I'm you not know? laughing and at you. See, that's I just, exactly. I'm, I'm thinking, the first thing I thought of was Kawhi Leonard. I remember when I, I was in San Antonio when they beat Miami, when they beat you guys. Right. And um, I remember talking about Kawhi's car when it's like some, it, it wasn't an NBA, like someone made him Oh, get right, car. right, right. He had, yeah, yeah, his yeah. car was like a, I think it was a truck. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a truck. Yeah. It, I'm not it, laughing it at your truck. car. Trust yeah. me, Crest Trump is a good car. Take your air to B. I'm not. Yeah. Listen, listen I'm but not. like, like for me, I was like, look, like I need a car that's gonna have like that car had the most leg room of any sedan. Of course. So I had that. It was, you know, they had they had some some rims on it. I had some some twenties already. Like it, it was already like or already set up. It was, the grill it was, was, it was nice. a used car. Yeah, it, it had had a, nice. had a nice grill. 
t- tinted oh, windows. It had a Hemi, so you know it, it, it could, could you know, it, it could go. Right. And so I, I was like, I, I was good. And you know, some of my teammates like they'd be like, "Man, like Doc, like everyone call me Doc." They're like, "Doc, like like that is not an NBA car. Like, what are you doing?" I said, "Look, like I like, I, I like it. You couldn't tell me anything. Like when when I had that, pulling I was, up right there next to the Porsche and the, the Lambo, yeah, no problem. Yeah, with, with that, and, and that was at least like respectable, you know, to me, you know, res- you know, respectable for 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 a vehicle. Like obviously, like to to some of them, it's like, look, like." Like please, like try and you know try and get someone else. Like I think they might have tried to get a GoFundMe at, at one point if I wasn't. <laughs> stop! Stop! <laughs> no, stop it! <laughs> no, honestly, just just because you know to to them like to see that they're like, why would you you know have it? But I was like, look, like I'm gonna take care of my money. Like I'm not gonna. Why am I gonna spend all this money for like a, a, a car when I have you know other things to be able to take uh, care right, of? Like I don't wanna, uh, uh, you know. I don't want to be that guy that's just trying to like keep up with anyone else. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna do everything within my lane, and if people, you know, look at it different, like I'm, I'm confident enough in myself that I'm, I'm fine with like what, what I have. You know, and and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be around the people that, you know, are, are gonna be able to, uh, you know, uh, appreciate that. For sure. Like, I think the 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 one the the one time though, like I did understand it was. Before I had made it to Miami, I had the rental. And so the rental was a, I feel like it was a, uh, it might have been like a small like Hyundai. Come on, bro. Come on. Bro. And so it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Joel, man, come on, man. I'm an undrafted kid. They, they yeah. gave me, the, they, they gave me that as a rental. Like, like I didn't, it, it was it was just one of the things, you know, when you go over there, they, they set you up with, with an apartment. I was staying over at the, uh, bro, you the, six the ten, Mutiny Hotel. How you fit hotel. inside a Honda? They, they're like, look, this is what you, I, it, it was free. <laughs> 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 you know? I didn't, so I didn't have to work, pick for it. Yeah, so like, I made it work. We went to dinner one time, so we all, the whole team, eating at, you know, we're eating at uh, Prime 112. Bro, don't lie, your knees were No, 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 oh, I'm sorry, though. it was Vivi's, uh, Italian, like, like right across the street. So everyone's like, we're gonna go out after. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool, we all go out. So everyone gets in their cars, they all drive up. Uh, everyone drives up to the club. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, close to like, you know, cl- close to the end, you know, probably five cars drive into the valet. I'm driving with my teammates. The valet dude stops me like this. He said, nah, bro. He said, you need to move that over. He said, general parking is over there. I said, okay. I said, all right, all right. I, you know, took, took myself over to general parking. You know, just parked over there. And, you know, we had to walk, walk in, you know, like, and, and then meet up with the guys after. But that, that was the only time I was, you know, I, I was really had someone, you know, kind of really made me feel that, you know, like this vehicle at least yeah, yeah. wasn't, wasn't it. Which is understandable. Like I wouldn't have had, you know, like that vehicle if I was just buying, buying a car. But um, this, you know, the, 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 the Chrysler though w- 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 wasn't getting turned down by, by valet. Right, like, like right. so like, it was nice enough. I, I knew if it was nice enough that valet in Miami wasn't going to turn me down, it was, it, it was, it was good enough for me. Oh my God, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I, st- I low key. I can't really picture you in a in a in a three hundred, but I definitely can't see you in a <laughs> in a Hyundai. That's that's that is that got to be painful, man. Yeah, yeah oh, you, man. you 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 manage like, like when you when when you're tall, like you you know nothing's built for you, so you used to fitting into cars like you know knees might have to be yeah, all the way up and everything, but yeah. you just uh, you just make do. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> hilarious. I'm sorry. You got turned. General admissions of <laughs> um, so general parking right there. One of the things that I found when I when I stopped playing um, was like I had I had some some issues with like self worth and trying to like figure out what was going to give me the same feeling as basketball. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to know is that is that something maybe that you know you experience as well? Like, as you said, there's nothing like playing the game, and I completely agree. There's nothing like playing right. in a game, especially with a, f- a fan base. Like, you know, I, I love to perform. I, I love having other people clap and applaud and you know look at you while you're playing basketball. Like, mm-hmm. like, like that's the point of the sport, right? 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 Like that's the point of of having spectators. So losing that 
took a bit of time for me to be like, okay, well, what else can I put my all into? Not for other people, but you know, for me. Mm. Um, I, I think, I think I did feel feel some of that in terms of like what I was gonna do. It wasn't really about anything like on the outside. Like I actually liked the fact that I wasn't you know gonna get as much attention. You know, wow. from 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 playing and everything like playing that. Europe, so, playing Europe, playing NBA, a little different, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. You no, know, but but still, like I, I I definitely understood. You know that it was there. There was going to be an adjustment. I just didn't know. It was just for me. Like COVID hit at the same time. Yeah, that's crazy. So it was really just me, like just stuck, not being able to do anything. And there wasn't even hey, you know, like so some people they you know they they might have their jobs and they they have to get on Zoom calls and they're still doing the other stuff. Like I was. Like I was, uh, I was just there, just kind of like staring at the wall, <laughs> you know. Like I, I didn't trying I, to fit into Honda. Really, yeah, <laughs> like I, I didn't know, you know, what I was going to do because, like now, like the plan that I kind of had laid out was 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 kind of like thrown thrown out the uh, out the window because I, I wanted to honestly like be able to like just travel a little bit. I was like, look, let, let me just take a year off, and, you know, to kind of figure things yeah, out, relax, and like really really not do anything. Yeah. Like I don't care what it is. If there's an opportunity, I don't I don't even want to really entertain it until after you know that year. And you know, I started to you know, but I, I was at home for a bit and I was looking into some things. And then you know when well, when COVID hit. Uh, it, it really shut everything down where I just had to, you know, be there and and just kind of sit. And now I'm really having to think about, you know, what exactly am I, you know, going to do? And um, with, you know, that's why when the CBL came, uh, what was coming back around and Rock was taking that position because you know, everything is shut down. So I wasn't uh, in the coaching program. I wasn't, you know, with the 905 because I would say like the G League shut down too, and so that was a huge that was huge for me because now I was looking at, you know, hey there there might be something you know I could do. I, I did have an interest in coaching and in you know in the front office and let me you know kind of work with work with him and 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 work with his team and see where you know where it's gonna take me. And I like I didn't know, but at least I felt that I could see some light on the road right. to, to where it's a I, start. Yeah, you know, to, yeah. to where where I could possibly go. And so like that's that's why for me that was big. So I was like, hey, like look at this direction that I could, you know, go into. And I was still, you know, taking my time, you know, with it. So, you know, my commitment wasn't huge. I wasn't like a full coach. Like that that's why I had, you know, the the role as a consultant because I, I would help out with with the, with the coaching staff. I would shadow, you know, like Rock at least like like the first year when when he was around, um, to uh, to to see kind of how how he operated as as a GM and you know just just trying to learn things uh, about the league as well. You know, learn about the business of basketball. You know, I, I'm someone that I definitely love the idea of being able to learn and I'll, I'll put forth, you know, like the, the energy and effort into that as long as I feel like there's someone that could teach me. You yeah. Know? And that, that's yeah. really, you know, my, my biggest thing, being able to have uh, so someone to work with. And uh, so so the league was, was really big for me in, in that in terms of, you know, giving me a sense of something that, you, you could know, I could, I could actually do. Um, for someone who like doesn't have because one of the things that you can do in your position because you're fortunate enough to do so is that you can afford to do that like i don't know if they paid you to do that or not as a consultant regardless you can afford to give your time and effort and if i'm an athlete and i just stopped playing and i don't have that luxury mm. I, I played in europe i played football in college i played whatever and i'm done what do you think the first step they should do if i think they're their first step really should have been before they yeah. were done. And so like, Touché. that's the, the, that's really the biggest thing. I, I, I give the example of, um, you know, I talk about uh, Javon Shepard. Yeah. You know, so like Shep was, was someone that, you know, we, we used to, we, you know, we used to kind of like joke around with him about it. We're like, Yo, you're, you're a man, you're, you're like new era. Like, like a man with so many different hats yeah. <laughs> because like he, he was done and he's like, to me, he's like the gold star. I'll, I'll give him his flowers for it. <laughs> even though, I'll, you know, he's, he's probably going to take it a little too far. So, you know, he, he was someone that, you know, came in, he, he got into like real estate. Yeah. He was, 
he he got into uh, helping. I think he was with with Ryerson at, at first, helping to uh, coach and and being on well, maybe not coach, but more of help in a consulting type role over there. Was getting into broadcasting, and he was he was doing all these different things, and so he clearly had a plan, you know, before. So I, I think you know guys really have to put time in before to know where they want to go. Once they you know you know, do get, get back over, um, you, you, you have to, you know, have to, have to have, you, you have to have some type of base and foundation. So you want to make sure like you have, you know, obviously like a place to stay. So, you know, you're not thinking of bouncing around anymore. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, usually it's just what, you know, temporary, you're just there for uh, a couple months and then you're uh, on to the next team. So, uh, just, just being able to come in and, and have, uh, so some type of foundation, um, in terms of where you're going to be a support system, you know, so being able to have people around that will be able to, you know, influence you in, in the right way. Like people that are doing things that you might be interested in. Right. And, uh, I think definitely because you just finished playing, there is some value, you know, there's definitely value in that as being someone who just finished uh, playing, um, Obviously, you know, you, you want to do the stuff before, but if you're just done, you know, going, you know, trying to intern your time and, um, you know, tr- trying to be around to, uh, to to try and try and learn and soak up as much as you can from, uh, you know, from, from, from who, whoever it is you, you might be interested in. So, like, if there's someone that's into, um, you know, marketing, you know, so, hey, look, like, find, find a way to tie it into what you've done in basketball because, you know, if if you haven't done the work in terms of doing stuff with marketing before, you do have basketball as as experience, right? So, do you think that should count as like as experience on a resume? Absolutely. Like, in so terms why of, isn't it? it? Well, it not to say like I play basketball, so I have experience for this position. But right. you know, using basketball to say if I'm I want to get involved in marketing, like you probably wouldn't be marketing and doing something in fashion but doing marketing and something in basketball related. Yeah. You know, so use it and using that, like, Hey, I was a former player. Let me use my network. And like, that's something that's huge. Being able to use your network to get involved in those things and having, using basketball as that Avenue. So yeah. someone that's dealing with marketing with a basketball team, they'd be the ones that you would, you would try to talk to and reach out to because there's at least some type of connection because you don't have, you know, you didn't go to school for, for, you know, let's say say there's a situation where you didn't go to school for that you could at least say hey look like i i played and you know i was around people that were in in that in in marketing i'm trying to and me myself i'm marketable right like as an athlete not me but i mean like as an athlete like you yourself are marketable right so and like like, whether it's you know for for yourself or or wanting to you know have have a position where you're going to be looking for people that are you know, marketable or, or having having a job within that. It's mm-hmm. just using you know using that you know using the sport and and your your position as a as an athlete and seeing the different avenues where it might not just be in basketball, but you know finding for finding the the connection you know yeah. fi- finding that connection from basketball to whatever you're you know you're you're looking into you know if you're trying to get into you know. Like well, whatever it is, if if you're looking into to music, like finding people in that network that could connect you, you know, through uh, uh, th- through there. So, so someone that was in basketball that already that's 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 involved in music, yeah, you know, and and saying like, hey, look, you there, there's something that you share in common, you know, try to you know leverage that to be able to say, hey, like I'd like to find you know opportunity, and then and more, op- probably one of the biggest things also is just. You know, being open and being humble to, uh, and and willing to do the work that it would take. That's one of the big things because we are somewhat, you know, spoiled as athletes. Really, in terms of never would have thought. <laughs> you know, so like, we, 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 you know, you, you got to call a spade a spade. Like, there is, you know, you're you're blessed to you know play a game of basketball and get paid money to do it. Like, you know, there, there isn't, there, there's no better job in the world. Like, I don't. Like I, I just I have don't to agree. Really, just don't really think there is. <laughs> so, but like being willing to like do the work because like now like the same work you put in like 
in terms of trying to trying to get your body ready, trying to get your skills ready, like you have to be able to put that in into whatever you're going into after. And I think that's something like some guys aren't, you know, quite quite ready for. Like even, you know, you look at like even like coaching. Like when I went through that that coaching program, uh, Butch Carter uh, yeah. actually uh, runs it, and it's one of the best thing. It was one of the most eye opening things to me, where I saw the amount of work that really goes into being a coach and you know I, I've had guys you know reach out to me and say hey you know I'm looking to get into coaching and this and that but you know they the, they're not they're not quite as ready to put in the work that it really takes and I've, 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 I've seen it in a lot of different things especially in my position as like now as a GM and seeing you know different positions that that people want to you know jump into like even if they get into it they're not quite willing to put in, you know, that same type of work to really get it done. Like, you, well, what does it require like, to be do, a coach? Do, do they want it or do they just like kind of want it? Like there's a, you know, there's there's so much time in terms of film. Yeah. Uh, there, there's so much time, you know, in terms of, you know, being able to, you know, like uh, scouting in terms of, uh, you know, plays and studying, you know, all, all, all different, you know, schemes and, there's there's so much work of you know just being able to do like even just the clerical stuff like dealing with the uh, you know trying to track uh, if you're trying to track you know a certain a certain stats and uh, doing um, uh, whether like like if you're scouting a game and being able to like properly you know like track everything and put put together uh, a report how to use the film like how, how to use the like software and technology and making sure you learn all of that you know you have to know all these things it's not good enough to say hey like I played you know like 10 12 years so um, you know I have experience and so that should you know maybe that was something back then that may have worked in some cases but you know now you have to put in the work because you have people out there that are putting in the work that don't have the experience that, that that you have in terms of as a basketball player, but are putting in the work to learn all the software, to learn, you know, all these different, you know, schemes, know, know the different players and, um, you know, put, putting reports together and they're taking all that time. So that, that program, the coaching program showed me that, you know, you have to be able to, you, you're able to have the best of both worlds mm-hmm. when you have the experience that nobody else could get and then if you put in the work, you have an opportunity to actually, you know, be uh, be successful. You know, so I think guys have to, you know, really be able to, guys or girls, obviously, realize that there's there's just a lot of work that, um, a lot of work that goes into it. And it was, it was easier when we played because we loved what we did and it yeah. was fun. Yeah. You know, and so. And rewarding. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. so it, like one, try to find something that is fun and rewarding. Um, and pays you. Yeah. You know, but 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 understand, even even if it's not the money, just knowing that it's still going to be a whole lot more work and it's not going to it's not going to feel the same. But understand, like if, if it's if that's what you really want to go into and that's what you feel like really moves you. That you're gonna have to put in like a, a you know crazy amount of work to be able to get it done. You know it's not gonna be easy. Um, you touched on it a little earlier. You talked about you know being a general manager. So my my question is like, why a GM? You know like if you if if you did the coaching clinics, why did you decide to go this route and become a general manager? And and what's been the biggest challenge thus far? Uh, my agent said I'm crazy for doing it. Uh, <laughs> So I actually, I first looked into um, ownership Okay. Uh, at, at first, honestly. Um, that, that was the first thing that I looked into. In the CEBL? In, in the CEBL. So when I was with Hamilton and then I heard that the Montreal team was going to, you know, come around and I, you know, I, I talked to uh, Mike uh, Borealli over. Uh, of course. And. Shout out Mike. Yeah. Shout out Mike. And he, uh, you know, I, I said, look. It's funny because I realized so many people were saying these same things, but, you know, I said, I I really want to be a part of this, you know, with, with whatever you have going on, like, you know, the team in Montreal, I really want to be able to be a part of this. And a lot of people say that, but (laughs) no, no, you're not wrong. uh, A lot of people say that in in, in a lot of things like, oh, like, like I want to be a part of, I want to be involved, but like, what exactly does that mean? And in what type of way? And like, what are you going to be able to, you know, give to you know, be able to do that, um, to, to be able to make it work. 
and so we, we started talking about things <clears throat> and the first thing was was really you know ownership for me you know i was thinking hey like how could i do something that would affect you know change in terms of how this was being done so yeah. let me start from the top and you know it, it, it didn't end up working out um when uh when, when we're trying to get things done and you know the, the league ended up holding on to the team you know so so that was fine so what was going to be next and i knew that i wasn't going to put in everything that it took to coach because I, I i knew the volume of work that the, that it took for that and to be a head coach at the highest level wasn't something that really moved me as much um I, I could have been in like a lower level on the front office, like going all the way up, and I feel like I would have had interest in anything uh, uh, along the way, mm -hmm. where I felt that there was more of a ceiling with coaching. So when it came to the front office, I was like, look, you know, probably, you know, I'd probably say, you know, general manager, um, because I want to be able to have, uh, you know, like I said, like have an effect on know what was going to happen and be able to help make change especially because it was something very personal to me mm -hmm. you know i was born and raised in montreal so to be in a situation where i could you know help do something for the city and this is really my way of giving back because also i've been gone for so long you know i've been gone for so long and you know so many you know i, I miss on so much time you know back in the city and i love being back over there but you know, I had to focus on basketball. I had to focus on my career, and I've sacrificed a lot for that. And so, being able to come back and now do something like this, where I really want to make sure it's it's done well, and I feel that I have you know a lot of experience to in like, like in basketball that I could you know give to you know this you know this team and this organization. And so that was really what what, what drove me to to want to do it. Like this is a lot more personal you know, for me to, hands on. to to be a part of it and to be hands on. Now, when it comes to the work, the volume of the work, <laughs> that was, you know, I, I I knew it was gonna be a lot, but I didn't know quite, you know, like how much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And especially because we were starting from scratch. Yeah. So it was totally different. Like I would talk to, you know, Rock and Shep, you know, cause they're obviously GMs of, of their teams. Yeah. And, you know, they 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 were huge, and uh, like there, there was a lot of people that you know really that I, I would would lean into. You know, went into the roller decks and you know going through my network and talking to different people that that had different experiences in terms of you know how how to get this done. But even some of the stuff that I was doing, like we were, you know they didn't even have to deal with it as much because you know they they they, they never had to start from scratch. The team had already been there at least a year. Yeah, you know, which is you know. Uh, a lot different so you know really seeing the amount of work that uh had to be put in and you know i, I realized like like some people as much as you know they they might love to have like that type of position because it and, sounds and good the title yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. It, it's it's not it, it's not just like all all that like everything isn't sweet like there's a lot that goes into you know um to, to getting that done and so but I've, I've 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 loved it and and taken a lot of pride in it and i think are you, you know, going to continue doing so? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I definitely want to uh, con continue to do this, and it's something that's that's driven me. I think for uh, one of the biggest challenges um, is like like for for me, I would say now, like probably the biggest challenge would be recruiting in 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 this position, just because there's so much that goes into that. Yeah, you deal know, with people's agents. You got to deal with agents. You got to deal with players. You know, you have to deal with, you know, on, on your side, like what you have to offer, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of salary, in terms of resources and, and making everything work so that you could even just make an offer to someone that may entertain it, may not. They say they are. And then you get to the 11th hour and then, <laughs> hey, my, my guy just decided like he doesn't want to do this. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like what's next? What's plan A? What's plan B? Um you know, there's the, there's a lot that that really goes into all that, and you know, trying to build, you know, like the like the the right team. You know, you you have you have an idea, and you you plan it out, and it doesn't always work like that. So, like, how do you also adjust? And then, you know, that that would be the other thing, like just making finding ways to be able to adjust and 
Um, you know, you, you have to you have to kind of roll with the punches at times, especially when you know things are going kind of crazy. You know, for for our first two years, that's how it was. So um, it was it, it's been it's been a great learning experience though, like for me. I've I've definitely enjoyed it, and as much as like it's been been a lot of work, I've I've loved the work that I've I've been able to to put into it. Do you want to get to the NBA as a as, as a GM? Is that do you want to be part of the league? I, I get asked that question, you know, a lot. Like like well, where's the well, where's the ceiling? Like yeah. where do you go next from this? Yeah. You know, and so you know, for me, I, I was always saying that I, I just want to be able to you know just focus on this. Like let me just you know, develop in this yeah. and, you know, fair. I'm, I'm learning, you know, so many different things in terms of, you know, you know, hiring, you mm -hmm. know, hiring staff, um, scouting, um, you know, you know, the developing, you know, programs and, and different things that, you know, our, our teams could, could do, you know, things, you know, off the court, you know, been, been working, like we have a great uh, president in uh, Annie LaRouche and, you know, she's, you know, she, 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 she's been great in terms of, you know, helping, giving us, you know, what, what we need with the resources that we have and, and just being able to, to work with her also, like just figuring out how I could be, you know, kind of the best, you know, like GM, you know, for Montreal and how, how, how could I, you know, give, you know, give the most. So it's been, uh, it's been a good, you know, like situation just like 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 a lot of work but I'm I'm not too sure where where exactly it would go from here mm -hmm. um you know I, I I would look to ex explore you know I, I I've been told <laughs> you know I I should try to be more ambitious with things but you know this is you know something that's very you know close to me you for know, sure it's very like I said it's just very personal so um it, it's not something that you know, I, I got, you know, one foot in and one foot out looking somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't anyways. Like, it's, it's <laughs> it, it, it would be too hard, right. you know. So, um, you know, m maybe when things settle down a bit, I, I could, you know, think a bit more about, you know, what else I'd like to do. But, you know, I, I do have, you know, contacts and, you know, I, I go to a bunch of <clears throat> different events. You know, I go to, like, the Winter Showcase, uh, the G League Winter Showcase. some. Portsmouth. I was just in Portsmouth. You yeah. know, I go to summer league. You know, I, I'm able to meet with you know a, a lot of different people and mm -hmm. uh, you know continue to make connections, build connections. And so, you know, if, so, if something were to come up, you know, I would I would consider it. But I don't have anything you know absolutely absolutely set in terms of that I, that that I want to do you know after right now. Just you know being being the best version of uh, well, what I can can be here you know right. for for Montreal. Um, as a GM now, you're around players who are in their process, in, in, in the midst of, you know, their dreams. And, you know, some people are living their dreams. Some people are chasing their dream. Um, do, does the CEBL or do you focus on what they're going to do afterwards, if at all? I mean, do, you know. Is oh, that, definitely. Is that discussions? Definitely. Like, like for me, like the, I say it all the time, like this league is a stepping stone league. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're a player, if you're a coach, if you're working in staff, like we have officials in, in our league, everyone is looking, you know, to use this to build on what they do. The broadcasters. And broadcasters, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. like all, all around, like, like this is a league that is a stepping stone league and is huge for the development of, you know, all forms of basketball, you know, at, at, at every level in, uh, in the country. So it, it's huge for that to be able to have that at a professional level. Right. You know, I've, you know, I always say that the, the winter season is the most important thing, you know, for everyone. That's where, you know, they'll spend the most time. That's what provides them usually with the most money. Yep. And so how could we prepare them, you know, like for that? And obviously, Still, the season is extremely important. You want to be able to win games. You know, you, you want to be able to, you know, be uh, be extremely uh, competitive. But how, you know, how are we able to, you know, make sure people have a good, you know, good experience with us and get opportunities to be able to, you know, move on, you know, move on from there. And, you know, when, when you have guys that, you know, didn't play the year before and they're able to play with you and, and get another, uh, another opportunity that might not have been there, you know, like that's, those are things that are, that are great guys that are, 
just starting up and you know they're 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 trying to find a way to get into the business and you're able to you know give them their first opportunity to really work in a professional setting um you know and and being able to see them develop from there like like the, those are the things that you know uh we we definitely enjoy and f- for me also like just being able to see what we could do for the locals in in our city yeah. you know the Montreal basketball community is something that you know I care about a lot and I've I've, I've been fortunate to, to to grow up in it and I want to be able to see it develop because it, it still needs development and I, I think having a pro team like ours it's it unifies every, you know obviously like with a name like Alliance um, it, it, it's fitting um, because it really brings everyone together yeah. you know where that there's they are somewhat scattered at times in the city but you know I I do know that you know with our team everyone could really you know come together <clears throat> and and then find a way to build and you know I, I just absolutely love that fact uh, about it yeah and there's been a lot of good players come out of Montreal yourself Lou yeah. Dort Chris Joseph off the top of my head you know I mean, Chris Boucher like NBA or not, there's been a lot of good players. It doesn't get the same attention, you know, as Ontario. Ontario, you know, did beat Montreal, you know, or, or Quebec, you know. Just <laughs> well, saying, just saying, it, just saying, Joel. I mean, I'm, <laughs> Team Ontario, you know, I'm just, just, I'm just saying. The, the, that's not understandable. But we've, <laughs> we've always been underdogs in, uh, For sure. in, in, in Quebec and in Montreal, and so, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm really excited about, you know, that the development that, that we've seen like with our players. Like we have more and more players that are coming out of our city. And, you know, they've they they've always, you know, Montreal players have always had a chip on their shoulder and they've always, you know, had to play with um, a different type of uh, intensity just because, you know, they're 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 never picked to make it. Yeah. You know, they're they're never picked to make it. It For was sure. you know more the you know obviously Ontario, Toronto, you know, uh, Ontario, and 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 obviously definitely Toronto is is where you saw you know so many players. Obviously, there's there's a lot of talent there. There's so many players there. Um, but you know, we, but we've, we've often yeah. we, we've definitely been uh, been overlooked before. So it, it's been it's been great to see kind of uh, all of that develop and seeing all those players now come in. Yeah, and you know, you, you have you have guys all the way to Ben. You know, like now is is really the first one that's Matherin, Yes, you know, yeah. like, like Ben's the first one who's gone in through like the front door. Yeah. You know, like he's yeah. like, you know, six pick in, 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 in the draft, draft yeah. and, yeah. you know, he's, you know, had had a great, you know, like runner up for rookie of the year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so seeing that, like you, you, you see there, there's a lot more promise <clears throat> and, and that, that's just going to inspire, you know, like, like the youth that, that are coming up um, uh, right after him. So, you know, it's, it's definitely great to see like, you know, my Montreal, my Montreal is on its way. And so it's just about being a part of it. Yeah. I just, just Which you want are. to be a part of it. Um, looking back on your career, you know, you know, you're 10 years in the league and throughout the entire part, what are you most proud of? That's a good question. Um, I'd say most most proud of. Uh, I think of, even though it's not so much basketball. and Doesn't have to like, be. Um, yeah, like just to have been able to have, left you know I, I i left montreal and not really knowing what i was what i was going to do um i i knew i wanted to you know play basketball i knew i wanted to just learn and get better and win games and to to look back at where i am like after if i think of you know that that first day when i left montreal i was at the train station you know, bus stop because I had to take a bus to New York and then fly to Pensacola. Mom's crying. <laughs> you know, my my boys. You know, uh, I, I I run them over there. You know, you know, dad me up said, you know, like like best of luck and you know, no one knowing like what was gonna happen. You're taking a big you know, risk. Yeah, yeah. Like no, no, no one thought of anything of it. They're like, uh, you know, Joel's going over there. I, I wasn't. You know, I, I wasn't like like a big, you know talent or highly regarded yeah you know then and to see and to think of you know after it's all done and I'm like okay I'm done playing ball now and just seeing everything 
that had happened. Like I think I did well in terms of you know my original promise of wanting to get better and win, win games, which was it was very simple, but <laughs> it was it was literally the the thing that pushed me forward. I think and, you did all right. I mean, you know, but but it, like I, I say it because like like that was that that was my foundation. Yeah, like yeah. obviously you know like it was you know to get you know to continue to get better and eventually it was get better to you know play division one get better to you know be a pro you know ended up going to the nba and now you know i'm and i'm just trying to win you know like along the way and you know go to the ncaa tournament you know go to sweet 16 win the conference tournament win right. you know uh, win nba championships when um you know i was able to win in uh in overseas as well and you know i i think i've I did well and made, I would say like made my mom proud um, just because like she, she was my biggest influence like at the time. Like I, I cared so much about wanting to make sure like she was, she was going to be good. Yeah. And, and when I played and as I was going through kind of like my journey, especially like when I was, when I was in college, I remember telling, you know, just telling my mom that, well, once I had a feeling that I was gonna try to go pro, I was like, "Look, I'm gonna do this." And you know, my mom, my mom's a former educator, old school West Indian. <laughs> so oh, I know she's like, "I don't care what you do with basketball, you're gonna graduate." <laughs> and you know, and but just explain to her like, "Look, I'm gonna go into basketball, like you know, seriously, and you know, to you know, make make a life for myself." And and being able to do that. And knowing that she wasn't gonna have, well, not to say she wasn't gonna have, because she still worries about me, but <laughs> that, that that she wasn't really gonna have to like worry about, you know, like mm. her son anymore. And like I'm gonna be good, and I'm gonna now like be able to help her and take care of her, and you know, the, the those are the things I kind of think of and look back on and say like, hey, like you know, did you know did pretty well in terms of what I wanted to do when I first left, you know, and so. Uh, it was, you know, it, it, it's, it's probably, you know, one of those moments, you know, looking out on the balcony, I could, you know, think and, and appreciate. That's the dream, man. Yeah. That's the dream. Um, I want to do a little rapid fire with oh, okay. you. Okay. So, as soon as I ask a question, you get a little response out of you. Best moment in the league. Uh, okay. Oh, I was going to say, like, could, could, we, could we edit it if it's too fast? I might sure. say the wrong no thing. No worries. <laughs> best moment in the best NBA. Mom, best moment? Uh, definitely when I will, uh, first got into the league, when, when I found out I made the team in Miami. That was best best moment. It was unexpected uh, in terms of how it happened. Right. Um, how did that happen? Uh, basically, so I was – going through camp day before uh we're supposed to start you know the the regular season supposed to start uh so last day of training camp uh don't hear anything don't know what's going on my agent's like you hear anything no nothing <laughs> he's like no news is good news so i i i go into the arena they there are some guys that got cut already mm -hmm. and so like i drive into the arena and so we the, there's like the locker room and then there's a the, the bathroom at the side in the bathroom there's like hot tub stalls but there's also like a set of lockers over there and everyone that wasn't on the team that was just trying to make it that's where we that's where we were yeah, yeah. You, you're not going in the locker room you got to earn this <laughs> so i go over there to 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 get my get my gear for practice cuz i haven't heard anything no gear there i was like okay like all, all of it's cleared like okay. no and stuff so I go into the locker room and you know I, I see the equipment manager there. There's and there's one other person, Alex Hunter Johnson. He was over there, and so there's just two of us there. And I'm like, Yo, where's the uh, where's the gear? Like, well, what's going on? Like, I don't I, I don't know anything, right? Like, I'm you know, super green with with all this. And um, he's like, I don't know. I was like, You're the equipment manager. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? He's, I don't know. You just look around and. Like I remember AJ was, you know, he was just kind of smirking, you know, not not really saying anything. And I looked, and then I caught my name oh. on on the locker, and that's how how I knew. And so big like, relief. I remember I was like I couldn't believe it. Like I wanted to, like I, I ran out, you know, ran out the locker room. I grabbed my phone. I was uh, I was trying to call my mom. My mom being as busy as she was, I couldn't get a hold of her. Mm -hmm. 
called my agent, couldn't get a hold of him. And I ended up leaving a message. I was like, look, like, just letting you know, like, I, you know, I made it, <laughs> you know, I made it. You know, and I see my name's on the locker and everything. And, um, you know, it was, it was just like, like by far, like the, like the biggest, greatest like moment for me in yeah. terms of, because it was, it was, it was a surprise. Like I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like I felt, you know, confident about, you know, how, how, how I was playing and getting better, but I didn't know if I was going to make it. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys that, you know, were really talented that were, that were playing, um, you know, for a spot. So, you know, there was like six guys, um, you know, in your position. Over, uh, no, there was like two other bigs. There was three other guards. Um, actually, it might have been seven. Like we were like like we were, we were fully fully loaded with guys for for training camp. Um, so yeah, like but the, that was the, the that was by far like like the biggest moment just because it was like I, I didn't know how it was gonna go and then I was just absolutely shocked you know to to be able to see it you know you know see my name there so definitely best moment worst moment worst moment <sighs> man um i would say maybe losing in the finals to the spurs no, no, no. I I was I was gone by that time. Okay. I I was, I was gone the when we lost cuz I was traded in January. So I would probably say losing uh we lost the when we lost to Dallas. Dallas, yes. So yes. I would probably say losing to Dallas in in the finals yeah. like Pretty, yeah, I expected you to, wanted to like just uh, go under a rock and just yeah. you know disappear like I remember like I, I didn't go back home you know right away like tried to stay in Miami and just but it was like like that was a tough time just because everything that that we went through everything that team went through yeah, between like I, I would say that like between between that and probably like a rough like the rough year that I had the year I was traded from Miami, like that was a rough year, just because didn't have like really much of a role anymore. Mm -hmm. Knew that I was probably gonna get traded by the deadline. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how it was gonna happen, and you know, I, or I'm sorry, when it was gonna happen, and then going to Boston, which was a whole nother experience, and it was just it was like a rough year altogether, like definitely for me. So like that was one of the roughest. That that was the roughest year for sure. And that losing in the finals in Dallas was probably like the worst moment. Best player, best player that you ever played against. Played against. Uh... You can say me. I, I get <laughs> it. I, I understand. I... Does it have to be like position wise? Like, nope. like, like any, actually any, again or just like anybody, on the court with? Anybody. Anyone that you were stepped on the floor with? Uh, pro probably Kobe. Good if, answer. Yeah. If, if I talked to someone that. It's because of like, like you, you said played against, not played yeah, with, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like, like play, played against, I would probably say Kobe. I'd agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm playing with you. Best yeah. player that you played with? played with yeah like probably braun yeah, yeah. um pre-game ritual pre-game ritual uh it used to be fettuccine alfredo and broccoli interesting as a pre-game meal before every every game, every game. post like, game what'd you do uh it would all depend um i guess if you lost their one right <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 if i lost like i, I wasn't I wasn't the sore loser, but like I I I wasn't good company to, to yeah. do. I was like, ah, I'm going home. Right. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm going home. I'm not happy right now. But there's uh, yeah, like, like probably in terms of pregame ritual, like that was the, that was the one thing. Like I had to have like fettuccine alfredo with with broccoli. Like I would have it every game. I would I would order it from uh, this place over in Miami, 
um, like, like like right downtown, like I, right after shoot around, I put my order in, shower and everything. By the time I'm I'm out, you know, out the door and get over there, like the order's ready, take it home, um, and then you know I I, I do like regular stuff like. I make sure I got a nap. I had to get two hours, you know, two hours minimum for for my nap, um, or maybe maybe an hour and a half would be like maybe the minimum. But ha- had to, had to get a nap in for sure, um, and you know that's like I, I may have had like some other little stuff in terms of routine. Yeah, but like the, the, that was the, the, the those are the things like nap and uh, my uh, my pasta. Hmm. Um, I think I don't know if we touched on that earlier. What is the best NBA atmosphere? Playoffs or regular season? Well, playoffs. Um, but what city? So, and the, the, like that's why I said like it. It really you know it might depend on on the matchup. Like playing against you know Indiana, Boston, and Chicago in those series. Right was like an amazing atmosphere because it was so competitive right you know so it's so competitive um regular season a great atmosphere before they they got good was golden state oh golden state i remember we, we we'd be in golden state and we we're like man if this team like you know got better like to where like they're in the playoffs like this place would be rocket night it was it was an amazing atmosphere over there um that that was that was definitely one of the spots and then in terms of you said best atmosphere i don't know if it was best atmosphere probably the craziest atmosphere was uh bronze first game back in cleveland oh shoot shoot yeah, that I the, that I've never like <laughs> that like the finals doesn't compare to that. No playoffs compared to that. Why? You know, it was just like you felt all of the like intensity, all of the anger, all of like everything, like all really? of Cleveland. Like it was so deafening, like loud and just like intense for the entire time. Like from when we like step first, like before you even get into the arena, like like you go in and you just feel everyone's just kind of on edge, and then when you get out there onto the floor, and they just as soon as they see you know see us come out, there the boos were just this like so loud and consistent, and then anytime they showed and they would show Braun on the jumbotron. And you didn't think it'd get louder, but every time they showed him, it got louder and worse, and it was so intense. Like that, like when you talk about being in like a real hostile environment, mm-hmm. that was that was it. And there was nothing. There's like no 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 one else on the team like could have said. And we had guys with like a lot of experience, like Juwan Howard had like 17 years at that point. Like you had all these guys with a lot of experience in the league, and no one had been in anything like remotely like that. I'm sure you know this question was going to come. Who's the GOAT? <laughs> and so are you talking about who's playing or? Who who's is it? Your, your definition is greatest <laughs> of all time um, who, to you. Because I, 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 I think it depends on like what era like you're okay, talking about. Okay, that's fair. Like, 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 the reason so why I'm asking me. you is because I have a real fascination with the fact that you'll see NBA players on Instagram and they'll say their opinion and the comments will be people who've never touched the basketball saying that they're wrong. Yeah. So I want to ask someone who's played in the NBA <laughs> who the best player ever is. And if yeah. it's the era, that's great. Yeah. Just, well, I want to know like, what you like think. For, for me, it goes, you know, you just, it just kind of goes down by like era. So like, you know, you have Braun in, in his era, then you have Kobe, you know, after that, then you have, I guess in between, maybe Duncan in between, but Jordan, you know, it's funny you say that. Duncan. People you don't keep, put him up there. I, I do. He's he's fourth for me. All yeah, time. like he's he's like, real. He's like 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 Tim t- Tim Duncan was the one that like really made me lock in defensively in terms of being a better defender. Like so, 2008, I had to. So I started. You know, I obviously like I came in as as, as some someone that played defense. Like that's what I was I was there for. And so you no, know, I I was showing that uh, I was able to hold my own. Mm-hmm. And so, 
you know, they would, it, you know, when I was guarding in the post, it was like no double. Like Joel's, you know, got it. Like you know, young guy, like he's, he, he's been doing well and got it. And I guarded Tim, and it was like a clinic, like master class of, you know, just shot fake, hand in, foul. This like I, I learned. I, I probably learned more in, in like that game alone, like playing against him, than I did like you know the the the, the whole season. Like it was just you know he was he was so so good and when he was like and 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 locked in and just so efficient and it was like like it was really impressive to me like to to play against him at at, at that point, um, so the but yeah like, like I I would say Tim Tim is someone there that you you'd you'd have to kind of put him up. it's hard so you know to to kind of do it but. I don't know exactly how the years all match up, but if if I could put Tim in there, like I'd put Tim for like a certain time period there, but you know Kobe, like for sure, um, without a doubt, and then maybe there's someone there after him, but Jordan, obviously, um, there, and then going further back, like I don't, I don't know, but obviously, you know, there's there's two guys that people always want to put up there. Yeah, so of course. I don't I don't entertain all that. No yeah. problem. I can tell you're media trained. It's a good answer. <laughs> um, yeah. To conclude, we usually play a game, so a secondary oh, game. Um, this is called, it's called for three. You can answer any of the questions with one word or one sentence. Okay. Yeah, it makes so sense. Just just keep it short, basically. Bit, you know, more or less, more okay. or less. One All word, right. one sentence. So right. question number one, basketball is, finish the sentence. Love. Dope. Uh, when people hear the name Joel Anthony, what should they think of? Basketball wise, like Joel basically. Anthony. Joel Anthony is more than basketball. So what what should they think of? Nice guy. I like that. It's good. Um, if you could rent him, if you could rec- if you could recommend, well, I can't talk. If you could recommend anything for an athlete to follow, post retirement, even before, what should it be? Their passion. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for so, being here. I mean, this is this is great. I don't know if you remember 2018. We were I was in training camp with you. I was going to tell you in the beginning, but I'll say it at the end. I remember I drove to the basket. I beat Rock. You sent my shit so far <laughs> into the. We were we were we were, we were at we were at uh, Scotia Bank. I got by, and I didn't, like I knew like I knew you obviously. And I knew you were left handed, so I was like. Let me try to avoid the left hand, and I got long arms, so I went around you. I, I, and, bro, I remember this clear as day. <laughs> I tried to go around you, and you came, and you literally went, and that ball, I literally went, the ball <laughs> hit the side of, uh, in the practice court in yeah. Scotia Bank. So yeah, I was yeah. like, that's like, I was like, shit, man. That's my fondest memory of, of you, but I want to say <laughs> thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. You know, you played for Canada. Your journey just to get to the NBA and what you've done and taking the time to be here, you know, this is probably – the longest conversation we've ever had yeah. other, other than you sending my shit somewhere in the, in the stands, but really do appreciate you being here and thank you for doing this, man. Hopefully other people get to see another side of you and thanks for telling some of the stories. That's yeah. cool. I, and I really hope now that you have a bigger car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do know. I, I do know. Appreciate you having me, man. Love appreciate it. you having me. Hey, if you like this episode, I'm pretty sure you're going to like the other ones. So if you do us a favor, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share with a friend. I'll see you in the next one.